Okay. All right, thank you all for coming to our um, panel on students who have done this research over the summer. Um, the way this panel's gonna work, I'm gonna have our panelists introduce themselves, and I'll introduce myself so you know who I am. Um, and then I have a couple of survey questions for them, and then I hope that you all will also ask some questions about their experience, what they learned, the process of getting that opportunity, um, the process of um, kind of moving through it, things that they learned that have affected what they're going to do next, perhaps. Um, all those questions are, I think, are fair game um, for all of our panelists. Um, and we'll do that for about 30 to 45 minutes, and then we'll wrap up, and we're welcome to eat as much of this food as possible. Um, so my name is Frank Cedrolo. I'm the Career Community Advisor for Technology, Engineering, and Physical Sciences. And all of our panelists introduce themselves and share their name, year, major, and your previous research experience. All of them? Or the sure. summer? <laughs> okay. We'll do all of them. All right. Hi, my name is Maria Gonzalez. I am class of 2019. I am a physics major, and I use she, her pronouns. Um, my, I started research my sophomore spring in the physics department in James Batat's lab doing the dark matter detection research. I did a summer fellowship at Washington University in St. Louis in their electrical engineering department, working with metamaterials. Um, and then I worked for a year with James Batat and the chemistry department, the biology department, the geos department, and the engineering department working on an interdisciplinary project with the Paulson Initiative, working on water sustainability. Um, I did an RU this past summer in the robotics department at Oregon State University, and I'm currently thesising with Professor Robbie Berg. Hi, I'm Maya Igarashi. I am class of 2020. Uh, she, her pronouns. Um, I am a physics and Japanese double major. Um, and I also started research my sophomore spring um, here at Wellesley. And then I had, I continued that research over the summer here at Wellesley with Professor Berg. Um, previously, I had worked two summers, two summers as a lab tech um, in a biology lab at home. Um, yeah, so that's me. Ah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Charlie Klein. Um, I use they, them, and she, her pronouns. I am a senior, chemistry and environmental studies double major. So I spent two summer, or not summers, uh, two semesters in Rachel Stanley's chemistry, environmental chemistry lab. Um, I spent a semester with Dan Brabander in his geoscience lab working on a chemistry project. When I was abroad in Peru, I did um, Part of the program was to do research, so I did a soil study in there. And over the summer, I had a research experience for undergraduates at the Smithsonian Environmental Research Center, where I did a kind of, was supposed to be um, environmental chemistry project, but wound up being an, a hydrology project. Hi, everyone. I'm Matilda. I'm a neuroscience major and a senior. Um, I use she, her pronouns. Um, and my first research experience was through MIT, the Europe program. Um, I started there my first year in the Thai lab of the Picard Institute for Learning and Memory, and I'm still doing research there now. Um, but two summers ago, I did research at Brigham and Women's Hospital um, on multiple sclerosis, and I actually got a fellowship through Wellesley to do that. Um, and then this past summer, I worked at Novartis, a pharmaceutical company in Cambridge. Um, and now I'm just still working at MIT for my last year. Um, so we're going to focus some of this on your most recent summer, so the thing that is most fresh in your memory. Um, could you give a brief summary of like what your um, summer research was on? Okay, so like I said, I did an REU at Oregon State University in their robotics department. Um, my focus was on studying the effect of material tension and geometry of the transmission of vibration through asymmetric orb webs, so spider webs, um, how whenever their prey lands on their web, how they feel and how the vibrations transmit through the different lines of the web. Um, so I was working on some instrumentation for that. 
Um, I was here doing the summer student research. Um, I was working with Professor Berg on isolating single nitrogen vacancy centers, which have interesting quantum properties, um, and are potential candidates for quantum computing. Um, so NV centers are in diamonds, and I was working with diamonds and lasers. So my RU was at the Smithsonian Environmental Research Center, and my project was to assess the hydrology of a stream restoration project. So I was basically looking at how the surface water and the groundwater interacted. Um, so at Novartis, again in Cambridge, I was in the ophthalmology department, so I was doing research on a disease called age-related macular degeneration, which affects like the retina of the eye, and a lot of my research involved um, like cell culture and different analysis of like cell cells of the eye, basically. Um, can you each share how you found this research opportunity and what the um, application or interview or essay writing, whatever components were involved in that? What was that like? So I applied to, I think, four or five REUs. I found them by, there's an NSF website that compiles all the REUs, and I just went through and read the various projects on the physics and engineering pages and found the ones that most interested me. Um, the application was a Quillartic's, I think that's how you say that, survey setup. So there were several different personal statements that were very short as opposed to like, I think typically you'll get one long one, but for this particular one, there was one on why do you want to be here? Why do you want to do this research? What is your background? So it was pretty straightforward. They were pretty straightforward about what they wanted. Um, the one thing that really sticks out to me about the application for this one is that there were a couple sections where there were lists of skills and classes and they said to check all of the ones that you've taken. And I remember looking at them and being like, I cannot honestly actually check any of these skills. So I tried to click next, and the application didn't let me move on. So I had to email the people in charge of the REU and ask them to bypass that for me. So I thought it was not going to happen, because I actually had to email them and say, I am underqualified. Please let me apply anyway. But it worked out. So that is what sticks in my mind about my application process for this REU. Um, so I applied to a few REUs, but I didn't get in. Um, so the summer research is kind of like my backup, um, but it was my most likely uh, opportunity because I've never done research before in physics. Um, so my professor was very open about having a lab and having wanting students to come and work. Um, so I just talked to him, and he was just like, yes, please come work with me. Um, and the application process is pretty painless. Um, it's just like two essays, like 400 words, I don't remember. Um, but also just knowing that professor was very interested in having me and like there was that relationship already, so it was pretty uh, set that I was going to get it. Um, so it was very painless and not very stressful. So similar to Maria, I went through the NSF's website where they divide everything by um, the subject area of the REU, and then you can also put in keyword searches. So I believe I searched for environmental chemistry and environmental science, and I narrowed my choices down to, I believe I applied for seven REUs this year. Um, and I only got into the one of them, <laughs> which is pretty standard. So um, the application process was also similar. You, I think it was just one essay that asked you know, your background and why you want to do this research. Most of the ones that I looked at was divided so that you apply to an entire REU program at whatever institution it was, but then that institution has a bunch of different professors or researchers doing specific projects, and then in usually in the essay or in a separate question, you narrow like three professors that you would want to work with, and then those professors or researchers are the ones that actually choose you for the project. So there was no interview for mine. I was contacted by email by the researcher who had chosen me for the project, offering me the position. Um, so last year, I wasn't entirely sure what I wanted to do during the summer. I was kind of looking for programs. I was interested in like the NIH program that they have over the summer, where you can like do research. But then I kind of like 
last minute found that Novartis um, had this program available for our students over the summer. And um, I wasn't really sure what to expect from industry because I'd never worked in it and I just thought it'd be a great opportunity to see what it was like. So I applied, um, but it was kind of like, I wish I'd seen it earlier because there were three letters of recommendation I had to submit. So I kind of had to like contact professors and try and get people to write those for me. And it also ended up not being a letter, but more like they were sent like kind of a questionnaire where they had to fill in um, answers to questions that they gave um, my references. Um, and then another thing was that they had a GPA cutoff where they said, we recommend you have this GPA. And mine at the time was actually lower than that. But they had a box where you could still apply and sort of justify why it was low. So I kind of did that. And I thought, OK, this is probably not going to go well. Like, um, I obviously don't meet this requirement. But I still filled out the application because I thought it would be a really cool opportunity. And there was no like real cover letter or personal statement I had to do. But there were like five or six questions, short answer questions, where you would talk about like why you cared about the experience, what you would get out of working at Novartis, um, what coursework or prior experience would help you. Um, and I think that's probably what helped me the most was like my previous experiences I had. Um, and then I was, they contacted me that I'd gotten through like the first round by email. And then they have a series of like mentors who like contact you individually if they specifically want you. So he called me and I had like a phone interview. And then a few weeks later, I was notified that I had gotten an offer for the job. Great. Um, and I'm going to pick up that last question that you mentioned was in this application. <coughs> How did your previous experience um, factor into what you either looked for or your experience itself over? So I think for me, the best way to answer that question is talk about how each, not in detail, but how each experience differed in terms of my preparation. So I was really glad that I started working at Wellesley as opposed to starting somewhere else first, because I was working with someone whom I was already familiar with. I was already familiar with his working style, and he was already familiar with like my background and what I understood and what I didn't understand. So he was able to teach me how to do things more independently, but I didn't have to just do things independently straight off, which I thought was, it was really helpful. And I didn't realize at the time how helpful it would be, but later on that really benefited me. Um, and then I went off campus and that summer was a lot different because the professor, I went from being at Wellesley where the professors primarily focus on their undergrads to having a summer where the professor would just disappear for a week or two at a time and would be completely unreachable by email. Um, if I had started there, I think it would have been a much, much more difficult experience because I wouldn't have been used to being able to self-start problems. Um, it was still very difficult, but it was. I was really glad that I had the Wellesley preparation for it. Um, and then going forward, I worked here a lot more, so it was projects I was interested in, I think the main benefit of working at Wellesley is that the people know what your interests are and what your background is and know how to tailor a project. Whereas if you apply off campus, then they have a project in mind and they kind of pick you based off of your past experience, but you really have to adapt to them, um, which is good in a lot of contexts, but can be a little intimidating at first. Um, and then this past summer, um, I went in and I had different research experiences behind me. And I really felt like for the first time, I was able to take a lot more ownership of the project. So if they told me to work with a new type of software or a new type of instrumentation, even if I had like never used it before, I was able to pick it up a lot easier. So it's not a matter of like gaining more skills throughout the time. It's a matter of gaining the skills to gain skills on your own and to ask a lot more independent questions. Um, in terms of shaping how I decided what I want to do. So I've gone from physics to electrical engineering to an interdisciplinary water sustainability type project to mechanical engineering robotics. And then now I'm continuing to do mechanical engineering robotics and start to starting to apply for grad school in that area. I'm really glad that I had the opportunity to do a lot of different things and kind of hone in on what I'm most passionate about because a big thing with research is that you do have to come up with a lot of the questions by yourself, and you have to be very persistent. So if you're not really passionate about what you're doing, it gets very difficult to stick with it for a long period of time. Um, and a lot of my research 
has been softer hard hardware interfacing, and it's just been honing in on how applied versus how mathematical versus how much hands-on I want to do. So it's really been a journey, and I think that going forward, I'm very confident that what I do is what I want to do because I have such a diverse background leading up to it. Can you repeat the question? Uh, <laughs> no, it was great. Um, how did your previous experience prepare you for this summer opportunity? Okay. Um, so as I previously stated, I hadn't really done much physics research. So um, I'm just going to echo a lot of what Maria said about how Wellesley is a great place to start building that experience. Um, the professors know you. It's a really small, intimate setting. Um, and a lot of these other REUs, I've heard stories about where you're like two degrees removed from an actual professor and you're just working with graduate students or like you're not their main priority. Um, so actually spending the summer here um, and gaining those skills and gaining um, just the experience um, in research is a great way to start. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, otherwise, um, you can still throw your hat in the ring for REUs, but Wellesley is a great backup plan, and it's not any way less than an REU. So I'm going to say that what my REU thought my past experiences would prepare me for and what they actually prepared me for are two different things because I did have a lot of past, ex well, a decent amount of past experience for this summer. I had three semesters of research at Wellesley in different areas and a semester when I was abroad doing research. And I think that really gave me a leg up in my application because the summer before this one, I applied to a lot of REUs and didn't get any. And then this summer I did. And I think the difference was all of that additional experience that I had. But in my, I think that those experiences that I had didn't really prepare me specifically for this summer because the research project that I was doing was like still totally different and pretty disconnected from anything I had done in the past. So it's not like I had gained any specific skills beyond, you know, what how to do research at all. But the REU website and process like makes very clear that you're, you're not supposed to need to have research experience before you do an REU because they teach you everything, and they did. Like I had a really good research experience, but and they taught me like everything I needed to know for that. So I think that my past experiences before this summer were all very different but I don't think that they specifically gave me any skills that I used over the summer, but I think they did make my application a lot stronger. Yeah, so I kind of think any opportunity you have to take part in some kind of research can only help you, even if you're not going to be doing those specific skills, skills or need that specific skill set later on, like um, just having that experience of like, working on a project, like troubleshooting a project, like understanding what doesn't work, what works, is really helpful. Um, so for me, um, I kind of, so my supervisor for the summer, he really cared about what I had done previously and what I hadn't done, and he kind of tried to tailor my project. He had an idea of the project in mind, but he wanted me to use both experimental techniques that I'd done before and other experiences, but also introduce me to new things, so it would be like, not too overwhelming, but also like a way for me to be learning new things. And I thought that was really helpful. And again, I think part of the reason why I even got into the program was because of my previous experiences, because I think that's what helped me kind of stand out. Even if my grades weren't as good as I wish they had been, like um, I could still show that I was capable of doing stuff in a lab, so. So I can keep asking random questions, but I wanna make sure that you all have your questions asked and answers. Does anyone have any questions for our panelists? Either all of them, a handful of them, one of them? Yes? Yeah, so like starting out as a sophomore who hasn't had any kind of research experience besides like lab classes, what was the first thing that you did to like have that first research experience before even, like even in like whether it was applying to a program or whether it was just like asking your professor to like work with them during the semester? 
So is the question, how did you get research at Wellesley, or how did you prepare and for research? What was your first, yeah, what was your first research experience of any kind outside of like classes, and how did you get it? Okay, so I started, the first research project that I did was with James Batat and his Dark Matter Lab. Um, I'm in kind of an odd but not too odd of a place where I started my major, my first semester of sophomore year. Um, so I had only taken Physics 107, the intro class at that point. So in the middle of Physics 107, I emailed him and I said, hi, I know I'm not a physics major, but your lab seems really cool and I have extra time next semester. <laughs> what if we talked? And then we talked. I told him what I was interested in. And he signed me up for a 250H, which is a half, a, half of a credit of research in your sophomore year. I think junior year is when it switches to 300. But that doesn't really matter. So I had no qualifications. I had half of an intro physics class. I had no experience programming, and it was an entirely programming project. But I emailed him, and I told him I was interested. I never wanted to do physics ever again. <laughs> um, but it'd be cool to do this. And he really went with it and tailored a project that he knew I would like and would keep me interested in physics. So I had I think I got really fortunate with that experience. I got really lucky because he was very invested in getting me into physics research. I'm going to echo a lot of Maria said again. <laughs> um, I also started research my sophomore year in the spring and over the summer. So I think it's really important to just make that human connection. Just go up to your professor and be like, hi, your work's really interesting. Also, do research on what their work is. That is a great way to get them on your good books um, and be... <laughs> Just be very clear that you just want to try something new. Like Most of the faculty here are just very accepting and very willing to get students into research. That's what they want to do. Also, they want to convert you into their subjects, so that's also <laughs> something to watch out for. Um, but yeah, I had biology research experience, but no physics research experience. And I was just like, hi, I want to do physics research. And he was like, let's do that. Because they don't expect you to have any background, um, and they want they're here to build that background. So it's totally fine if you have absolutely no research experience. Just showing that you want to is often enough to get that experience. Yeah, my story is also similar. So um, I decided on the chemistry major uh, second semester of my first year. And I knew that I was most interested in environmental chemistry at that point. Um, so I think I must have mentioned that to my 105 chem professor, and they said, you should talk to Rachel Stanley, because she does environmental chemistry. Um, and it's actually, I don't know about other majors, but it's a requirement of the chem major to do research before you graduate, so it was on my radar anyway. So spring of my first year, I talked to Rachel and said, hi, can I do research with you? And she said, yeah, sure. Um, so <laughs> it's really like that easy a lot of the time. So I started with her as a volunteer in the first in fall semester of my sophomore year, and then switched to, I think, a 350H in spring of sophomore year. So yeah, it, it's that easy. And with my other one in, um, in junior year, I switched labs to Professor Brabander's um, Geos lab. And at that point, I hadn't taken a Geos class even. I was taking Geos 105 in the same semester that I was doing research with him, which was kind of a weird situation. <laughs> but like again, it was that easy that I said, can I be in your lab? And he said, yeah, sure. So all you really have to do is ask a lot of the time. Um, so my first year, I was very committed to doing neuroscience, and I really wanted to start research as soon as I could. Um, and in my Neuro 100 class, my professor sort of announced to the class that like she was looking for undergrads, just like any other professor here is, to work in their lab. And so I remember talking to her and also someone, um, like a senior who was doing her thesis with her lab, um, about like me potentially working with them. And it was just very easy to get in contact with them and learn more. But then I wasn't really sure that that's what I wanted to do. And at the same time, um, I was also doing um, competitive ballroom dancing at MIT. And so one of the guys on my team, a grad student, was wearing this shirt with a brain on it. And so I kind of went up to him and I was like, oh my god, that's so cool. Like I study neuroscience and everything. And he's like, oh yeah, I'm like a grad student here. I do neuroscience. Like, 
you should come see my lab. And so like I ended up just like talking to him about like what he did for his research. And then I talked to the PI, the professor of that lab, and like they just said I could work there. And like I had no previous experience. I just had taken like one class in neuroscience. Um, but it's just really comes down to just talking to anyone. Like you never know who works where. And um, everyone's pretty willing to help you out, even if they don't have a place maybe in their lab, they're happy to point you to the right people who might need someone. Mm -hmm. yes. um, I have a question for you, Matilda. So um, I'm also a neuroscience major, so okay. I'm wondering, and I'm a sophomore, so I'm wondering, like, um, I know there's a lot of research opportunities, but you said this summer you work in, like, industry, so how yeah. do you um, find that opportunity, like, like Dan Henshake, I don't know. And also, how did you decide to pursue that versus um, like a lab? Um, so I was kind of I took um, neuropharmacology my junior so last year before I applied, and I was just really interested in like treatments for neuro diseases or just diseases in general. And I knew someone who worked at Novartis, but I never really like thought of that as like a potential. Um, place to work, but then I saw that they had this, op like I just kind of looked it up and saw that they had this application available, which I think was also through Handshake. I couldn't find it this year, but I think there were two other Wellesley girls who also did their, um, the program. Um, but I just thought it'd be kind of a different, like different experience, and I would recommend it if that's something that's like on your radar, because you do learn a lot of, like I learned a lot of things that I probably wouldn't have realized otherwise. Can you speak more about like MIT Europe and like just like the whole process and like the learning curve and your project? Yeah, totally. So um, my first year I knew basically nothing and it was kind of hard to start. Like everyone there was very supportive, but um, having no experience in research and also just neuroscience being like a complex field, I think there's a lot of different tech, like experimental techniques that go in it. It was all very new, but I luckily my supervisor was really helpful and kind of like started me off with like small like manageable projects where I just had to like assist with experiments and then kind of as I learned more and understood more of the project, he gave me more responsibilities. Um, and now even I've just been looking back at like how little I knew my first year versus now, and it's just so much has changed and I've learned so much and I feel a lot more comfortable with a lot of techniques. Um, and in terms of like. MIT research, I think, I mean, the labs are a lot bigger, so I barely see the professor. Um, I think, like, if I need to meet with her, I, she, she's available, so I can do that, but usually I check in with a grad student or postdoc, um, who I find really helpful. I don't really see, like, the, I mean, it's nice to be able to talk to, to the PI, but, like, it just can't happen if the lab is so big. Um, and in terms of the application process, you pretty much just need to like contact them. I mean, luckily, I just like had to talk to the guy. But um, a lot of my friends just sort of emailed out anyone whose lab they found interesting. And then either they tell you, no, we're not looking for your ops, or yes, like either like come by and like talk to us, like some kind of informal interview. And then you can see from there. Okay, so when it comes to applying for research like off campus and there was a question that's like, yeah, why are you interested in doing this kind of research? What is that supposed to sound like? Like, I don't know, there are no guides. So when you're looking at an application, they're like, why do you want to do this research or why do you want to work here? I think that the first place that you should go is to different PI. So the professors that you would be working with are a lot more important than the program itself at that point, I would say. So when I'm applying to programs now and when I was applying over the summer, well, the first year was a lot different because I had no idea what I was doing. Um, so I usually spun it as I was really confused. My first, I came in the most confused. So if you're like a first year or a sophomore and you're like, I still don't know what I'm doing. I didn't know what I was doing. I still don't know, what, no one knows what they're doing. Um, so the way I spun that was I have taken chemistry through organic. I've taken several different math classes. I've taken one physics class. I've taken intro everything. And I'm interested in doing research here because um, 
and then I would look at their website, I'd pull a couple of words, I googled what the words meant because I didn't know anything, and I mentioned that the different skills I had picked up in different classes would translate really well there. Um, and I really emphasized that I was flexible to try different projects because I didn't know what was going on. Um, and that actually worked. I applied to like four different programs. I got an REU at in a, an astrophysics department in Pennsylvania, which is really wild because I hadn't taken any astro and I'd taken one physics class. Um, and then the summer engineering fellowship at Washington University which once again was really wild because I hadn't taken any engineering, so really emphasizing the flexibility and that you're just really interested in research, I think is really important. But then later when I was applying this past summer, I had a lot better grasp on what I wanted to do. So I was interested in robotics and I'm interested in biomimicry. So I was able to identify professors whose interests really did align with mine, but it took a long time to figure out what mine my interests were, so I think it really depends on where you are in your academic career and in honing in on what you're interested in. So you're either going to want to flex or emphasize your flexibility or the fact that you're not flexible and you're doing exactly what I want to do and I don't want to go anywhere else. Um, but that's what's worked for me. I've had no experience, so just going to pass it on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I want to echo what Maria said um, and draw a contrast between my two um, summer application processes. So m the summer after my sophomore year, as I said, I didn't get into any REUs. Um, I applied for 11, I believe. And the, and, you know, the next summer I, I narrowed it down to seven and did wind up getting one. And besides the fact that I had more experience, I think the other difference between those two years was that I narrowed down the number by choosing pro projects and programs that were really exciting to me and were doing something that I knew that I wanted to do. The summer before, I kind of just applied to anything that said environmental chemistry, whether or not it was something that I was actually interested in. So I think for that question, you want to be as honest as you can and pick projects that sound super interesting to you so that you can be honest and say, I want to do this research because it sounds amazing and that's what I want to do. Um, but if you're not at that point yet where you know exactly what you want to do, like Maria said, like be flexible and also saying that you want to do this project because you want to explore this path and like see if you're interested in it is perfectly valid to say as well. Like that's fine, they're not gonna, like they don't expect you to 100% know what you want to do. It's fine to say that you want to see um, yeah, I think people accepting applications just mostly want to see that you're honest and that you're excited about what you're applying to. So just showing what you've done so far, what you're capable of, and like why you care, really explaining why that it matters to you that you're a part of it. Because in the end, like as undergrads, these experiences are there to help us. We're like, yes, we're helping out in projects, but it's more to help us grow as scientists and learn more. Um, and I also think, especially if you haven't had re previous research experience, um, if you've been in any orgs, if you've had any like leadership positions, or if you've tutored, all those things can also help, even if they're not directly related to science. It still um, shows that you you'll sort of take the initiative to do something, or like you you're good at collaborating in a team. Any of that can also help when you're answering that question. Other questions? I'm a first year interested in like doing research at Wellesley next semester. Um, do you think it would be better for me to take it as like volunteer hours or like have credit? You can get paid without actually taking it for credit. So like um, I have a friend who like worked in a lab to get paid instead of for credit. Um, so like if you don't want to have to like stick to like certain hours or like you don't want to have to like have that burden of it being like a credit, you can just get paid for it, for your time. That's what I've done, so. I think that really depends on the professor because in some departments, they're very strict about like logging hours and you're in lab from this time to this time. 
my experience with the professors I've worked at Wellesley with at Wellesley have never been that way. So I'll do like a half credit, which is supposed to be, I think, six hours a week and maybe one week. I just don't have time to do anything. And they're very flexible about that. And the next week, maybe I work 10 hours or 12 hours. So if I would talk to the professors, see how they log the hours and then make that decision based on that. It's never been an issue for me to do a half credit because of the flexibility of the people that I've worked with. So it's better to just, and you do get graded for that. And they they tend to not be very strict about grades. So if for me, doing volunteer work wouldn't have made a lot of sense because I would have been doing the same amount of work, same caliber of work. I just wouldn't have the grade on my transcript. So it depends on the professor. Yeah, um, I know it does depend on both professor and also department. So maybe you know more about the neuro department. But um, for the semester that I did volunteer, I did it because my professor recommended that I do. but. I wouldn't recommend that to you because like Maria said, it's like you're doing the same amount of work. You just kind of, you don't have it on your transcript and you don't, you can put it on your resume, but it doesn't count for as much. So the, the half credit requirement to get that credit is usually just like a short paper or project at the end of the semester. So considering like you're going to the lab for the same amount of time and that's all you have to do, I feel like you might as well, if you can, get the credit for it. Yeah, I've never worked in a lab here in the neuro department, but I think credit is definitely an option. I think it depends on the professor probably if you can get paid or not. And for when I started my year up, um, it was also my second semester, my first year. And I was so nervous of like not knowing things that I just did it for volunteer because I was just like maybe like commuting there. Maybe I like won't actually end up going there as much as I should. And just like starting out, I thought it'd be too hard. And then I ended up working there probably more than I would have needed to for credit, so I kind of regret not taking it for credit. Um, but then I did the following semesters, and definitely worth it to do it for credit, I think. Um, like in the summers, the way that at Wolsey we can just like email professors say I'm interested, do you, would you say, is, is there like something that we can do for professors, research that we're interested in at other universities, like for example, um, like near our homes, um, our professors are willing to take undergrads that don't go to their college. I've never done this, but I have a friend from abroad who did this. So it's definitely a little, not risky, but like because it's, it, you're kind of taking a shot in the dark, you know? Um, but my friend actually was able to secure a research position, not even near her house, but like just from a professor at some institution across the country that she was interested in. And there was no like set up program for her. She just emailed the professor and it worked out. So you're gonna prob if you do that, you're probably gonna wind up sending out a lot of emails and a lot of people won't get back to you, but there is a chance that someone will. So if you find research that's interesting, I would definitely recommend trying that, yeah. Um. I think that in general, emailing for a position not through a program could work. The only issue with that is that it might at some points be cost prohibitive to you. So um, the way that funding works for an REU is they have like a certain number of spaces and the NSF funds positions for undergraduates. So you get a stipend for most of them, at least in engineering, you'll get a stipend, you'll get um, that's just money for you to have as in you're working a regular job. I also have gotten transportation, so they've flown me to the place and back, and a meal stipend and housing for the full summer. If I were to email, even if the professor has space for students, they m might not necessarily have funding. Um, so you would be on your own in terms of finding a place to live and finding stuff to eat and that sort of thing, which is important. But if it's near your home, then it could be beneficial. I would just keep that in mind if you're looking at applying through a program versus not applying through a program. The program's going to be really set up as an experience for you to do so that you wouldn't have to work if you would have had to work over the summer otherwise. 
Um, I would also just check like the university's website because they probably have some sort of program that you could apply for. Um, I'm also trying to email people and get a job right now. Um, but also like you can ask a Wellesley professor like, hey, do you know anybody at this institution? Um, because sometimes that extra person who knows you and knows both of you to help connect um, can be important in actually getting that opportunity. Also, aren't there fellowships that you can apply for for funding over the summer? Like for grants through our grants program. Uh, those events happen in March. Um, and so yeah. you can look for an opportunity and that provides some funding um, for a summer experience, but it's something to apply to. For people who do research like early in their like Wellesley career, was it hard to find a better reference from the professors because like, you maybe didn't have much experience in most of those? Well, you don't need letters of recommendation for doing research like at Wellesley typically during the semesters. Do you mean over the summer? Okay. I didn't. I mean, one of the people who wrote my letters of recommendation was the person I was working with here over the summer. So um, there's that. But um, I was in the unique position where I'd had a lot of the same professors for both semesters already, um, so I felt more comfortable going to them for recommendation letters. Um, but I think it's still possible if you're it's still in your first year at least, if you have uh, contacts like people, maybe if you've done research during high school, um, or if you didn't, that's totally fine. Um, but I think those letters of recommendation can still apply. Um, I just ask people, and if you think you know, if you like a professor, they can probably write a good recommendation letter for you. Yeah, I've gotten recommendation letters from a professor that I only had one class with. So like, if you if you feel like you have, you did decently in the class and talk to the professor like at all, they'll probably be happy to write you a recommendation. Yeah. I had letters of recommendation that might actually horrify some people. <laughs> um, so the first time I applied for summer things, I had my professor who had taught my intro class and I was working in his lab, so that was a good one. And then I asked for a letter of recommendation from a guy who worked at a science museum that I volunteered at for a summer. And I got two of the summer jobs out of the four that I applied to, and that worked. And then the next summer, I once again had the professor who I'd been working with and I asked for a rec letter from someone whose class I dropped. And I was like, can you explain in your letter why I dropped this class so that I don't have to explain it? And he said, yeah, sure. And I got two of the four REUs that I applied to. So um, that's maybe not good advice, but it worked for me. So that would be my take on it. Okay, I have two really quick questions. So one, um, can you give me like a timeline or like just like what date did you, around what time of year did you start looking for something in the summer? And then also like I know REUs were more set housing wise, but if you weren't in an RU, what was the housing situation or like paying for that? Like, anyway. <laughs> um, so the first part of that question was, yeah. Like yeah. So my first time applying, I was a little bit late on the uptake. So I didn't really start looking till winter break, but this year I'm looking like now. Um, the earlier you start thinking about it, the better. Um, for me, my applications weren't due until like late January, early February, but still good to like give it a few months, tell people, hey, would you write my recommendation letter ahead of time? And like just seeing everything that's out there, because there's a lot of things. So narrowing that down is hard. Um, something that I did for housing, um, I had housing here, but I was also house sitting. Um, so that was a good way to make some extra money. Um, and also get air conditioning, because there's no air conditioning here, which is one negative that I will say. Um, I applied over winter break. I don't really think that that's late, because you have a good chunk of time over winter break to do it, and I think that's pretty common. Um, also, a lot of them are due during the spring semester, so it's 
it's a good time to do it. Um, the only thing is I would give the people you're thinking of asking to be rec your recommenders, I would give them a bit more advance notice and you can kind of alert them to like what your sort of vague plans are before you even come up with your official list of places that you're applying for. So that is one thing that I would think of pretty far in advance, but winter break, I think is a good time. Yeah, I would agree. So um, most of the REUs I applied for, their application deadline was like February 1st, February 15th. Um, so I started looking looking for programs and making a list probably in December and then through winter break. Um, I'm a procrastinator, so I didn't apply for them until be right before they were due, um, which is a lot harder. So if you can force yourself to apply over winter break, I would definitely do that. But um, it is doable to apply for them in the spring as well. But definitely tell the professors that you're getting recommendations from like your list early on, um, as early as you can. Don't let them know what kind of procrastinator you are. <laughs> Um, I think there's different timelines for different types of applications, but for at least for the Novartis shop that I did, and I think a lot of other industry programs, the applications are a little earlier. So I applied um, the like first week of December was their deadline. I think it is this year too. Um, but I think otherwise, like if you're looking through grants or other like um, research experiences through career education, those deadlines are more like February, March. And I actually, the two summers ago, the fellowship I got through the neuro department was due, I think, in February also. So just like keep your eyes at, like the applications won't take you too long. You just need to like work on the cover letter if you need to and make sure you ask your recommenders early enough. But um, it's generally between like December and March, I'd say. And I'll add that you work with the Brigham. <laughs> Brigham and Women's House. So those deadlines are right after Thanksgiving this year. We moved them a little bit earlier. So really, yeah, kind of like, Medical fellowship, or um, options we have through career education, those are those that went earlier. Um, we have for about one more question. Right now. All right, so my last question for all of you is what is one piece of advice you have for someone who's considering summer research? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, it's a great experience. Like, even if you don't have the best time, I my summer was a little bit weird, but like looking back on it, it's taught me a lot of valuable things. Even if you don't have like the best time, you learn a lot about yourself and like your work ethic and also like what you're interested in. Um, so like, yeah, it's a great experience. I'm going to echo the do it part of that <laughs> message. Um, I know for me and a lot of times when I'm applying, I feel like I shouldn't apply for whatever reason. Um, if you fall below a GPA cutoff, which I have, do it. If you're like me and you go through your apl application and you are actually objectively underqualified, do it. Even if like a lot of times REUs will be cut to like, they'll say they're cut to US citizens only, but every summer program that I've done up to this point, they have found outside funding and there have been international students who have been able to participate in it. Um, there's no, there's never any harm in applying or reaching out. Even if you're not super comfortable applying, you can always just email the program director and say, I don't think I should apply because this, what would you recommend? Um, if you're super uncomfortable, but honestly, I've fallen below a lot of GPA cutoffs. I've fallen below a lot of standards of things that you might need to do research, but if you keep applying and you're super enthusiastic about it, the worst thing that can happen is they say no and that outcome is the exact same that would have happened if you didn't <laughs> apply. So there's really not a lot of harm in doing it. Also, REU applications are free, which is a nice benefit. So you can apply to as many as you have time to. Yeah, um, I will echo my earlier statement about narrowing down to projects that you're really, really excited about because that will make your application so much stronger. But my other piece of advice is, although REUs are an incredible opportunity, don't put all of your eggs in the REU basket because they're crazy competitive. Like, a very small percentage of people who apply actually get into them. So I would also apply to 
anything at Wellesley that sounds interesting or just outside internships so you don't wind up having nothing to do because that happened to me and it was not super fun. <laughs> so just try to diversify your options as much as possible. Um, my advice would be to not be scared, like both when you're filling out the applications, just to do it like they were saying, but also once you get the um, the job or internship to not be scared when you're in it, because I think I've gone into all of my um, my internships sort of feeling like I was not qualified or that I didn't take the right classes, that my GPA was too low, that I didn't do the right things before, but all of my supervisors were always really happy with my work. They were always happy to help me. I realized that I knew more than I thought I did. And just to like challenge yourself and know that you can do it. Thank you. Let's thank our panelists. Uh, and please know that you are always welcome to um, kind of like make appointments with career education if you have additional questions about applying or thinking about applying or not knowing what you want to do and how do you think about that um, we're all we're all happy to work with you on that. Um, I will also say that there's been rumors flying that the Science Center Summer Research Program is not happening this summer. That is a false rumor. It is happening. It may look a little bit different because of the construction, um, but the plan is for that process to still happen this summer. So if you hear rumors that it's not happening, please come back those rumors. I'm doing what I can. You can do what you can to do that. Uh, but yeah, thank you all for attending.